restarting recording. Restart. Record. Hello. <laughs> Take two. Restarting. Recording. But also, we're doing local recordings this time. So instead of take two, it's like uh, times four. Take two times four mm -hmm. uh, is eight. But you square that and... Math! <laughs> I helped. Yeah. Today, it's we've fun. got a very special intro. Kitty. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, yes. Wait, are we going to go and do it the way we did it before? <laughs> we I think Kite mm -hmm. is going to read the entire thing backwards. Uh, why can't you just play it backwards? <laughs> that way it'll be accurate. Okay, wait, no, because no, no. Because where's... Chapter, I'm going to, 32 chapter covering be, will, we, and today, and read through blind A, abridged, mistborn is this. Way the along experience are discuss and chapter new each in what happens, what to cover to intend if we segment each. I can't believe you did that. Uh, it's, it's, it really, uh, I just was saying the words. It was actually quite relaxing just to just say words and <laughs> not, not think. I hope it made sense. Absolutely not at all. Okay, good. Great idea. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the No One Asked You podcast. For this particular series, I am joined by my wonderful co-host. That Don Kitty. That Don Kitty. And I are both going into this story completely new with almost no knowledge of the story or world. Each segment we intend to cover what happens in each new chapter and discuss our experience along the way. This is Mistborn Abridged, a blind read-through, and today we'll be covering chapter 32. Chapter 32! <laughs> no, well don't, don't laugh at this chapter. It's a very sad chapter. You're right. You're right. This is Why are you taking such joy in this chapter? We need to get up to that. No, no, we got several curveballs that I was not expecting. Mm -hmm. We uh, we get a nuclear explosion. Mm -hmm. We get Chad Spook. I I can't wait to hear what Chad Spook sounds like. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> And Jesus Kelsier, but not Jesus Kelsier. No, more like a oh, Jesus Kelsier. Yeah, we shall see. Well, I'm wondering where this is because I'm like, maybe, yeah, I usually read several times and then just before we record or the night before we record. And this time, this hurt too much. I, I read it several times in the beginning of the week and left it because it just didn't, it hurt. Yeah. Mm. I have conspiracy theories, but I do to too because I, but I think that they're also cope, <laughs> so we'll get there. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I'm just like no, it can't be. It cannot be. Yeah, we'll get there. Though many terrasmen express a resentment of Clenium, there is also envy. I have heard the Pacmen speak in wonder of the Clenny cathedrals with their amazing stained glass windows and broad halls. They also seem very fond of our fashion. Back in the cities, I saw that many young terracemen had traded in their furs and skins for well-tailored gentlemen's suits. Right. We have another... It's I don't know. I'm struggling to put this together with the chapter. I don't know. Uh, maybe I have still a bit of that resentment that we spoke about before. Now that the logbook is over, I'm like, stop telling me this stuff. You're not going to tell me any secrets. So, <laughs> so whatever. I don't want to hear from you. Stop telling me about, about, you know, your musings if you're not going to reveal your secrets. Kind of vibe. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. Until it delivers some sort of <laughs> moment. I'm, I'm resenting it now. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. not like I'm hating it proper. I'm just like, I have that feeling like, yes, and about it. <laughs> so Right. Yeah. It's not where the interest lies right now. I yeah, think. And, and it was something we fixated on a lot. I, I like that that there there has been that change. I like that there, there's feelings about it because 
the in in world characters feel the same sort of way about the, the logbook so i'm okay with that yeah um just expressing it though yeah well well said well expressed <laughs> i guess the only thing is just you know the the most obvious is like oh look the clinic cathedrals well the lord ruler kind of brought that into his own empire he has mm -hmm. in Lutherdale there's the keeps all have stained glass windows and Credit Shaw has that sort of thing so everything is like a, a cathedral now um, and they had that before so he's kept it that's what I can think of and then the terracemen had traded in their furs and skins so terracemen used to wear furs and skins now they do not and they still don't in current day yeah, from Rashek's perspective, it's more of terrorist culture under attack. It's it's disappearing. It's mm. not good from his yeah. perspective. And and I don't know about envy being what the terrorist men would be feeling going into a city after being, I don't know, rural. It's more just <laughs> wonder. Just because you have wonder, that doesn't mean like, oh, I envy it. Why don't we have this back home? It's more like okay, this is here and that's there. Culture um, shock. Yeah, he's jumped from Wanda to Envy quite quickly, which also just shows his ego. That's as much as I can extract from this. I don't know how I can make it relate to the chapter itself, though. Mm. Sometimes I can, I'm, I'm, I can do that retroactively. Like when I'm listening back to the podcast, that's when I do it. <laughs> it's like, that's <laughs> useful. Yeah. Well, hello, chat kitty. How are you? Great. You Any new it. insight? Yeah. Unlikely. But she, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Wait, let her listen. Let's get to the, the... Yeah. Okay, so kitty, we're going to check in with you at the end. I love I'm not going to be there somehow. <laughs> Put the timestamp <laughs> in the comments. Future kitty. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Two streets over from Clubs' shop, there was a building of unusual height compared with those surrounding it. It was some kind of tenement, Vin thought. A place to pack ska families. She'd never been inside it, however. She dropped a coin, then shot herself up along the side of the six-story building. She landed lightly on the rooftop, causing a figure crouching in the darkness to jump in surprise. It's just me. Spook smiled at her in the night. As the crew's best tin eye, he usually got the most important watches. Recently, those were the ones during the early evening. That was the time when conflict among the great houses was most likely to turn to outright fighting. Are they still going at it? Vin asked softly, flaring her tin, scanning the city. A bright haze shone in the distance, giving the mists a strange luminescence. Spook nodded, pointing toward the light. Keep hasting. Alariel soldiers with the attacking tonight. Vin nodded. House Hastings' destruction had been expected for some time. It had suffered a half-dozen raids from different houses during the last week. Allies withdrawing finances wrecked, it was only a matter of time before it fell. Oddly, none of the houses attacked during the daytime. There was a feigned air of secrecy about the war, as if the aristocracy acknowledged the Lord Ruler's dominance and didn't want to upset him by resorting to daylight warfare. It was all handled at night, beneath a cloak of mists. I thought that was really neat. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, also, I was, it was, I, I also wanted to comment about it um, when you were reading it. I was like, okay, we're both probably going to have something to say about this. I, I don't know if I would say like, oh, that was neat. My feeling towards it was, oh, that makes sense. And that's weird. It's weird, not weird, like, oh, it, it makes sense and it's weird. That doesn't make sense, Chinsia. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I mean is, it's actually quite funny. That's what I mean. Like, it's, 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 uh, it's there's something tense and serious yes and... but at the same time it's it's just it's tense and serious but then it's like oh we can't do it in the daylight then it doesn't then there's like this denial that that it's not real if we do it we're, we're just keeping it private it's amongst us somehow i like it's biz bizarre to me i don't know just the feeling wow, i'm trying to figure out what a chat kitty please tell us find us words <laughs> That's that, yeah. Because like, I, I, why? And I don't know how else to to describe it. I just thought that's funny. That's look, I understand it. Uh, that's what I'm. I mean, 
I understand it, so therefore it should not be weird. Help! <laughs> There's the word vampiric comes to mind in mm -hmm. a way, and I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but it's bringing with it... <sighs> It's civilized as well. <laughs> it's like, okay, we do this at night and then we clean up in the day. We just keep busy that, doing our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that is so well said. The word civilized. Yeah. Um, which, but that, like this dark weird. and corrupted version. Yes. Of it. That's what, that's what, un, that's un, uncanny, you know, un, unsteady. It's, it's weird. It's, uh, that's why the word weird came to mind because it just, it's incongruent because I'm like, there's war. It's crazy, but then we have a schedule for the war. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm there. That's the word incongruent because it's just like we have violence and destruction, and it's like, yeah, but we only have it at night, okay? Because <laughs> like that, th we are civilized enough to hold that hold back during the day, but after that, all bets are off. All lights are mm. off. <laughs> so yeah, that's <laughs> that's all. That's that's what I was trying to express. It just took me a whole like ten minutes to do so. So. Thank you for your patience. Wasing the want of this. Uh, Spook, could you try to speak normal? Spook nodded toward a distant, dark structure in the distance. The Lord Ruler, liking he wants the fighting, Vin nodded. Kelsier was right. There hasn't been much of an outcry from the Ministry or the Palace regarding the House War, and the garrison is taking its time getting back to Luthadel. The Lord Ruler expected the House War and intends to let it run its course, like a wildfire, left to blaze and renew a field. Yes, okay, a wildfire, but a wildfire that only blew, burns at night, okay? <laughs> they, they extinguish it that, before daylight. That, that's what, that, that just made me, again, return to that strangeness. Hmm. Except this time as one fire died, another would start. Kelsier's attack on the city. Assuming Marsh can find out how to stop the Steel Inquisitors, Assuming we can take the palace, and of course, assuming Kelsier can find a way to deal with the Lord Ruler. Vin shook her head again. She didn't want to think poorly of Kelsier, but she just didn't see how it was all going to happen. The garrison wasn't back yet, but reports said it was close, perhaps only a week or two out. Okay, I know they're planning on buying out the garrison, but you're cutting it very, very close. Yeah, and you're gonna negotiate. You're leaving it that you're negotiating, like, right outside the gates, I suppose. And, yeah, you don't have the payment yet. So, yeah, you are definitely cutting it fine. Yeah. Oh. Some noble houses were falling, but there didn't seem to be the air of general chaos that Kelsier had wanted. The final empire was strained, but she doubted that it would crack. However, maybe that wasn't the point. The crew had done an amazing job of instigating a house war, Three entire great houses were no more, and the rest were seriously weakened. It would take decades for the aristocracy to recover from their own squabbling. We've done an amazing job. Even if we don't attack the palace, or if that attack fails, we'll have accomplished something wonderful. Go this on. made me think of, you know, Menace and, and his whole mindset of, well, you know, we don't have to win for it to be a win. It's kind of like that, but I, I think it is a good good thing to to value what you have done in order to also just help you bolster and continue going forward. Forward, You know, you, you need some sort of source of of accomplishment to keep you going. I don't want that. I don't, and that has, doesn't stop her from wanting what she doubts will happen. So I'm okay with that. She doesn't have the exact mindset that Menace has had, but it's close. There's a line a little bit later that will... That is in my mind as I say this. Mm -hmm. This is revolutionary Vin. This is not thief Vin or or beggar Vin. This is the Vin that Ellen wants to be. This is mm -hmm. a weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, Ellen, that's a good comparison. This, Ellen wishes yeah. he could do this, make this kind of change. Obviously, he doesn't understand why he would be like, why do we have to destroy houses for it to happen? But He's in a completely different mindset that way, but he he wishes he was this effective, I would say, at least. Yes. 
Ellen's out there thinking about change. Vin's out there accomplishing it. And yeah. that's very much where her mindset is in this chapter. And, and yeah, it's very good for her brain to be going, here is stuff that I've accomplished. Like we've done an amazing job. That's a really good, wow, Vin, the way Vin's brain works is that you, you don't really think about good things, okay? So I'm, I'm very proud of her for acknowledging that, that they have accomplished stuff. So, mm -hmm. And it's been worth it. Good girl, Vin. Good girl, Vin. Mm -hmm. With Marsha's intelligence about the ministry and Sazet's translation of the logbook, the rebellion would have new and useful information for future resistance. It wasn't what Kelsier had hoped for. It wasn't a complete toppling of the final empire. However, it was a major victory, one that the Ska could look to for years as a source of courage. And with a start of surprise, Vin realized that she felt proud to have been a part of it. Perhaps in the future she could help start a real rebellion, one in a place where the Ska weren't quite so beaten down. That was a very impactful sentence mm -hmm. for me. Perhaps in the future. She, she's not planning on dying. Yeah, she isn't this kind of, oh, I'm not going to finish the year out kind of thing. She's actually like, yeah, perhaps. And she, and she has pride even. Like we were just, you know, Kelsia was saying like, I, I need to teach you to, you know, take more pride in yourself, to have more confidence in, in be less uh, disparaging on yourself. So there you go. We actually had some pride. Well done. But yeah, uh, that also made me think of, you know, that question about what do you think is going to this? If, what do you, how do you think this is going to end? I, that's what I mean by it ends with the beginning of a new story, basically, that that a new challenge or a, a with new knowledge about the way the Lord Ruler's work works, that will be the new task to to complete. And it seems like that might be part of it. That's, you know, future revolution. That that is a good that that's what I was expecting. I was like, okay, that it, it put into words, you know, because I didn't have much of an answer for what I expect to happen. But it would seem like Vin could be part of some rebellion going forward, whatever that looks like. New challenger approaches. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to cut you off. Yeah, <laughs> especially after the end of this chapter, mm -hmm. and given our, or at least my theory that the atium is used to hold off the deepness in perpetuity. I think, oh, yeah. and we've talked about how I expect there to be a mixed victory. I think that they will either stop and or redeem the Lord Ruler in some way, but the deepness comes back. That's what I'm expecting, yeah, especially at the end, because of the, we'll get to it, but because of what happens to the atium. That's what I, that's, I think I'm, I'm sold on that think that you do need the Atium. I mean, he's left enough crumbs for us to expect that. And mm -hmm. then if he twists it, that'll be well done. But, you know, like you, you got us, but I'm got. <laughs> I, I think that, <laughs> I do think that, that the Atium is necessary. And now Kelsia, we'll see what happens. This is a Vin with a calling and an mm -hmm. optimism and eyes toward the future. And it's really wonderful to see. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in the future she could help start a real rebellion, one in a place where the Ska weren't quite so beaten down. If such a place exists. Vin was beginning to understand that it wasn't just Luthadel and its soothing stations that made Ska subservient. It was everything. The obligators, the constant work in field and mill, the mindset encouraged by a thousand years of oppression. There was a reason why Ska rebellions were always so small. The people knew, or thought they knew, that there was no fighting against the final empire. Vin, who had assumed herself a liberated thief, and that was the line that I had in my mind when I said that thing earlier, Vin, who had assumed herself a liberated thief, had believed the same. It had taken Kelsier's insane, over-the-top plan to convince her otherwise. Perhaps that was why he'd set such lofty goals for the crew. He'd known that only something this challenging would make them realize, in a strange way, that they could resist. Spook glanced at her. Her presence still made him uncomfortable. Spook, do you know that Ellen broke up his relationship with me? Spook nodded, perking up slightly. But I still love him. I'm sorry, Spook, but it's true. He looked down, deflating. It's not you. 
really, it isn't. It's just that, well, you can't help who you love. Trust me, there are some people I really would rather not have loved. They didn't deserve it. Spook nodded. I understand. Absolute Chad move. <laughs> what was, yeah, it's better than him like, Ooh. yeah, that's what you're supposed <laughs> to say. Good boy. Yes. Can I still keep the handkerchief? He shrugged. Thank you. It does mean a lot to me. That's just like, oh, God. I, I, like, I understand that she needs, she, it's good she says that, but it's, it's, that's still painful from Spook's point of view. It's just like, yeah, great. It means, means a lot to you, but not enough, clearly. And that hurts, but okay. <laughs> I understand. Chad, move. I understand. Yep. Yep. No, but he's playing it cool. Mm -hmm. He's playing it cool right now. I mean, there's something to be said for a good, healthy persistence, mm -hmm. but not the right time. And no desperation from him. It's just, yeah, okay, cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a yeah. good, confident way to deal with it. He looked up, staring out into the mists. I'm nothing a fool. I knew it wasn't not to happen. I see things, Vin. I see lots of things. Ah, and he knew, he, he knew, he shot his shot. Yes. He played it cool when he didn't even fumble. Yeah. Like, he just, he shot his shot. It didn't go in, and he's like, cool. Okay, I know. Yeah. Like, okay, cool, her presence kind of makes him uncomfortable, but uncomfortable in that kind of crush way. He was already or, always uncomfortable <laughs> in that kind of, woohoo, she's there, and, <laughs> you know, kind of way. It's not like, oh, no, now it's uncomfortable because he was rejected. It's It's... It's that, just that kind of awkwardness. And he, yeah, he likes her. Hello. I, I love that. Yes, I love that he, he still shot his shot. He still made it known. Yeah. Good on him. So someone in the comments had said something to the effect of Spook is a very divisive figure in the mm. Mistborn fan community. And I'm so nervous about the Not future of Spook's story yes what are we gonna like don't don't ruin him no spoilers him. yeah no spoilers you know we'll enjoy and him while we can yes and to be clear that that's not me complaining about the comment it was a great comment mm -hmm. but like now i'm like it was one of those paranoid. If, it was one of those if you know you know comments okay so it's just like yeah I, they have fun with those but they play with our emotions <laughs> <laughs> like they're like ah oh, but i didn't spoil anything like you know like oh yedin's journey yes is that one was the biggest you know yedin's mm -hmm. journey his development as a character you gaslighting <laughs> gray <laughs> gray had and he did it with a soft you know just a, a straight face and a suave voice just oh he was so <laughs> confident uh i think that's that made it hurt even more but that was fun <laughs> um so we need to yeah. We need to get Gray back for another live stream mm -hmm. with some of these new characters for the yeah. casting. Yes, that is true. We need to do that. And then we can also berate him for all his, his <laughs> gaslighting and thank him because it was still fun. I think it really yeah. was the impact of Yen home. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want, maybe if it's a divisive character, maybe one of us will, will have the one opinion and the other will have the other and we can be representative of the fandom <laughs> i'm totally for that but um I, I like spook okay maybe it's because his name is spook i just think it's a funny cute i mean i really love lester borns as a, as a name anyway no maybe it's your fault because of the voice that you <laughs> i don't know but yeah we'll get oh. there i suppose the revelation will occur at some point i just don't want indeed it anytime soon Oh, yeah, and uh, didn't even front load it. We get something that I did not expect. Mm -hmm. A Vin Spook mentorship. Yes, yes, Apprentice. True. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. A a such as it is, you know, the, the language barrier, yeah. but it, it still makes sense. I like it. And he yeah. is, I didn't know he was the best, the best, uh, what's it, tonight. So that's cool. More Chad Spook. Yeah, he's a good Chad friend. Spook. Yeah. Yes. She laid a comforting hand on his shoulder. I see things. An appropriate statement for a tin eye like him. You've been an Alamancer for a long time? Wasing the snap when I was five. Barely even remember it. 
And since then, you've been practicing with tin? Mostly. Wasn't a good thing for me. Letting me see, letting me hear, letting me feel. Any tips you can pass on? He looked up thoughtfully, sitting by the edge of the slanted rooftop, one foot dangling over the side. Tin burning? Notting about the seeing. Wasn't about the not seeing. What do you mean? When burning, everything comes. Lots of everything. Distractions here, there. Ifing the power of wants, ignoring the distractions of both. If you want to be good at burning tin, she thought, translating as best she could, learn to deal with distraction. It isn't about what you see, it's about what you can ignore. Interesting. Do you, do you think she got that right? Or do you, do you think it's that, it's like, pay attention to what's not there? That's what I thought. But he did, he did talk about ignoring the distractions of both. So True. I, he did, like, she, it seems like she got it right. But I think, um, I know, I, I don't think it's about what you can ignore is a, is the, the, the correct place to land on that, though. Hmm. I think it's about it's what you can't. I, I think you you're you're right. Ignoring this ex- distractions of both. It's about focusing on a specific stimulus, I suppose. So it doesn't have to be that focus on what you don't see. Although we'll see, I'm sure we'll, we'll expertly have have this demonstrated at some point. But yeah, the you. It, it, I do think it is about learning to deal with distraction. It's about learning to to focus on one of the senses because you do he he is the the main message is everything is coming so you get all of the the feelings all of this all of your senses are heightened so you need to make sure that you focus on one at a time indeed and and certainly he does go on to say Mm. when looking seeing the mist and seeing the houses and feeling the wood and hearing the rats below choose one and don't get distracted good advice Spook nodded as a sound thumped behind them. They both jumped and ducked down, and Kelsier chuckled as he walked across the rooftop. We really have to find a better way of warning people that we're coming up. Every time I visit a spy nest, I worry that I'm going to startle someone off the rooftop. Vin stood, dusting off her clothing. She wore a mist cloak, shirt, and trousers. It had been days since she'd worn a dress. She only put in token appearances at Mansion Renault. Kelsier was too worried about assassins to let her stay there for long. At least we bought closer silence. Vin thought, annoyed at the expense. Eh? I, I forgot about. I, I well forgot about that. I was like, oh, thanks for for clarifying that. You, you couldn't leave that loose, okay? So I'm glad that they've okay. They've continued with the, that. Yes, but does it really matter at this point? Well, by the end of the chapter, no. <laughs> well, no, not by the end of this chapter, no. But Vin was spotted. Alamancing, mm-hmm. so I assumed that that secret was more or less out. And then, well, yeah, I don't know. What does it? We don't know. They haven't confirmed who it was. Fair. Um, well, that we know of. Yeah, that uh, we know of. Uh, um, and and the thing is, Cliss engaged in the blackmail because Vin was caught spreading rumors. But mm-hmm. and it said it multiple times. Doxon was working on paperwork to lend credence to the lie. So I wonder, yeah, after, after the attack at Venture House, now that the war has begun, now that that particular great house is extinct, I think, if I remember specifically which house it was, was it Hastings? Mm-hmm. Is Hastings one of the three that have that's, fallen? That's, that's brought, Hastings is now... Isn't that they've just spoken about hasting now falling? Exactly. So, what does Cliss's silence really matter at this point? It would be old news, wouldn't it? Yeah, and I guess it's also, also it's the 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 house war. I guess that's what you're saying that the house war has broken out already. It really doesn't matter who knows what. Well, like that, they, they can't they can't play at the balls or anything like that anymore. <laughs> play at the balls. Sorry, um, <laughs> don't. Uh, they can't, they can't, they, they, the politicking and, and the gossip and things like that is actually, yes, uh, uh, in time of war, knowing who's a misborn is very important, but it's such a minor house that it doesn't really matter. I agree with you. 
Yeah, but I suppose it's better to have her more or less friendly for the yeah. time being rather than openly antagonistic. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's time? Nearly so, at least. I want to stop somewhere on the way. Vin nodded. For their second meeting, Marsh had chosen a location that he was supposedly scouting for the Ministry. It was a perfect opportunity to meet, since Marsh had an excuse to be in the building all night ostensibly seeking for any allomantic activity nearby. He would have a soother with him for a good deal of the time, but there would be an opening near the middle of the night when Marsh figured he would have a good hour alone. Not much time if he had to sneak out and back, but plenty of time for a pair of stealthy Mistborn to pay him a quick visit. They bade farewell to Spook and pushed off into the night. However, they didn't travel the rooftops for long before Kelsier led them down onto the street, landing and walking to conserve strength and metals. It's kind of odd, Vin thought, remembering her first night practicing allomancy with Kelsier. I don't even think of the empty streets as creepy anymore. The cobblestones were slick from mist water, and the deserted street eventually disappeared into the distant haze. It was dark, silent, and lonely. Even the war hadn't changed much. Soldier groups, when they attacked, went in clumps, striking quickly and trying to overrun the defenses of an enemy house. Yet despite the emptiness of the nighttime city, Vin felt comfortable in it. The mists were with her. That was a line, mm. the mists were with her. They with her, yeah. They're comforting, they, they're back to what they were. Well, I mean, they, they hadn't gone, she had gone from them. But yeah, she, she feels like the mists are home, we, we know that about her. Mm-hmm. Vin, I want to thank you. She turned to him, a tall, proud figure in a majestic mist cloak. Thank me? Why? For the things you said about Mare. I've been thinking a lot about that day. About her. I don't know if your ability to see through copper clouds explains everything, but... Well, given the choice, I'd rather believe that Mare didn't betray me. Vin nodded, smiling. He shook his head ruefully. It sounds foolish, doesn't it? As if, all these years, I've been waiting for a reason to give in to self-delusion. I don't know. Once, maybe I would have thought you a fool, but, well, that's kind of what trust is, isn't it? A willful self-delusion? You have to shut out that voice that whispers about betrayal, and just hope that your friends aren't going to hurt you. I don't think you're helping the argument any, Vin. Makes sense to me. Distrust is really the same thing, only on the other side. I can see how a person, given the choice between two assumptions, would choose trust. But not you? I don't know anymore. What'd you make of all that? That feels deep, but... It is. I, yeah. Uh, th there's something a little unsettling. Not That's not quite the right word, but it, it, this doesn't seem like a happy thought. A, a res resigned thought? It's a cynical thought, mm -hmm. maybe? Well, first of all, when I first read read this, I was like, well, I was completely off because I was saying in the previous chapter that Kelsia doesn't want to believe that that Mare didn't betray him because that means he he spent a lot of time actually worrying about her having betrayed him and rejecting her and she didn't deserve that. But then again, after all of that, that would be some sort of feeling that he would experience. I don't doubt that. But what he, the most powerful feeling for him, which has come, is He's like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm okay. I actually would rather believe that about myself, you know, that I failed rather mm. than, she did, than she did. So it's like, rather he would rather, you know, believe that he, he treated her unfairly and she didn't betray him. And he, he literally is saying, well, I, I like, I think, you know what, I needed an excuse and I would like to believe that she didn't betray me. So yeah, disproved and I'm okay with it. <laughs> Well um, said. Also, when it comes to, so as you're saying about the cynical, well, the unsettling thing, it, it does seem kind of like, you don't, you don't want to trust people for that reason that you, you're just, oh, you're, you're just giving up on, you're just hoping, trust is hope. <laughs> you're just like, oh, well, I'm just hoping they won't, they won't take this trust that I've given them and use it against me. She's like, oh, well, mm. you just, but it is, it is a risk. That is what happens. You do. When you choose to trust, that is what you're doing. And it just doesn't sound as pretty as, as maybe that's what you found unsettling about it. It just doesn't sound nice because it's, it's about like hope, uh, just hoping bad things don't happen to you. I think it maybe, maybe it's, it's more about actually, maybe that's what's missing is she's not saying that you're trusting 
that what you believe a person is, is the truth. So you're trusting that the, that, that the person that you care about is a good person. Hmm. She's just like, oh, well, you kind of just hope that they don't hurt you. It's like that. Yeah. But there's an extra layer because when betrayal does happen, that's why people feel, they feel humiliated because they're like, oh, everything that I thought was wrong. And I feel like a fool because I thought a certain way because a whole, your whole world changes when somebody turns from, from one thing to the other. It's not just about, oh, hoping that they won't turn into something bad. It's expecting them not to. So I think that's what's missing from her perception of what trust is. Trust is more than just, oh, well, I hope people won't hurt me. Well said. Thanks. Kelsier put a hand on her shoulder. This Elland of yours, there's a chance that he was only trying to scare you into leaving the city, right? Perhaps he said those things for your own good. Maybe, but there was something different about him, about the way he looked at me. He knew I was lying to him, but I don't think he realized that I was Scar. He probably thought I was a spy for one of the other houses. Either way, he seemed honest in his desire to be rid of me. Maybe you thought that because you were already convinced that he was going to leave you. I... I don't know. And it's your fault, you know. I used to understand everything. Now it's all confused. Yes, we've messed you up right properly. <laughs> that was cute. You don't seem to be bothered by the fact. Nope. Not a bit. Ah, here we are. He stopped beside a large, wide building, probably another Ska tenement. It was dark inside. Ska couldn't afford lamp oil, and they would have put out the building's central hearth after preparing the evening meal. This? Kelsier nodded, walking up to tap lightly on the door. To Vin's surprise, it opened hesitantly, a wiry ska face peeking out into the mists. Lord Kelsier. I told you I'd visit. Tonight seemed like a good time. Come in, come in, the man said, pulling the door open. He stepped back, careful not to let any of the mist touch him, as Kelsier and Vin entered. Vin had been in ska tenements before, but never had they seemed so depressing. The smell of smoke and unwashed bodies was almost overpowering, and she had to extinguish her tin to keep from gagging. The wan light of a small coal stove showed a crowd of people packed together, sleeping on the floor. They kept the room swept of ash, but there was only so much they could do. Black stains still covered clothing, walls, and faces. There were few furnishings, not to mention far too few blankets to go around. I used to live like this. The crew layers were just as packed, sometimes more so. This was my life. People roused as they saw that they had a visitor. Kelsier had his sleeves rolled up, Vin noticed, and the scars on his arms were visible even by ember light. They stood out starkly, running lengthwise up from his wrists, past his elbows, crisscrossing and overlapping. The whispers began immediately. The survivor! He's here! Kelsier, the Lord of the Mists! That's a new one, Vin thought with a raised eyebrow. I like that title, Lord of the Mists. <laughs> yeah, it is good. It's 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 epic. And I guess think about the end of the chapter. You know, right now we're 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 having a laugh. She stayed back as Kelsier smiled, stepping forward to meet the ska. The people gathered around him with hushed excitement, reaching out to touch his arms and cloak. Others just stood and stared, watching him with reverence. This is what I meant when I said, Oh Jesus, Kelsier. <laughs> Indeed. So is that is that your opinion of, of Jesus Kelsier? Because you, you, you imbued that with with layers of meaning. I, I just mean there's something about him walking through a crowd with people mm -hmm. reaching out to touch him. And I think Vin notices like people want their babies to meet yeah. him. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, like I've seen movies about Jesus and with Jesus where he will walk through crowds and people will be reaching out to him. And that's kind of what yeah. I had in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I I can see it. Obviously, it's very obvious. But I, what I, I was just too busy feeling uncomfortable about it to even notice. Like I skipped a step. <laughs> well, that's the interesting thing. Yeah. This is all from Vin's perspective who is very fond of Kelsier, although she has mm -hmm. had concerns about mm -hmm. this element. And Kelsier keeps saying he's trying to do better or be better. Mm. I don't know. There, there's, I sense that concern that yeah. you're bringing well, up. 
yeah, we'll we'll get into a little bit more. I think of, of this dynamic with Vin. I think it's she's got some good Vin sight as usual. Yes, I come to spread hope. House Hasting fell tonight. There were murmurs of surprise and awe. I know many of you worked in the Hastings smithies and steel mills, and honestly, I cannot say what this means for you. But it is a victory for all of us. At least for a time, your men won't die before the forges or beneath the whips of Hastings taskmasters. There were murmurs through the small crowd, and one voice finally spoke the concern loud enough for Vin to hear. Say it, get <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> House Hastings is gone? Who will feed us? So frightened. I was never like that, was I? I'll send you another shipment of food. Enough to last you for a while at least. You've done so much for us. Nonsense. If you wish to repay me, then stand up a little straighter. Be a little less afraid. They can be beaten. By men like you, Lord Kelsier, but not by us. You'd be surprised, Kelsier said as the crowd began to make the way for parents bringing their children forward. It seemed like everyone in the room wanted their sons to meet Kelsier personally. Vin watched with mixed feelings. The crew still had reservations regarding Kelsier's rising fame with the Ska, though they kept their word and remained silent. He really does seem to care for them, Vin thought, watching Kelsier pick up a small child. I don't think it's just a show. This is how he is. He loves people. He loves the Ska. But it's more like the love of a parent for a child than it is like the love of a man for his equals. Was that so wrong? He was, after all, a kind of father to the Ska. He was the noble lord they always should have had. Still, Vin couldn't help feeling uncomfortable as she watched the faintly illuminated, dirty faces of those Ska families, their eyes worshipful and reverent. Yeah, uh, I, that, that's my feeling that I have just with this. It's just uncomfortable. And what do mm. you think of that line, it's more like the love of a parent for a child than it is like the love of a man his equals. Well, there's certainly something a little bit egotistical about it, which is not totally dissimilar from how he seems to perceive the Lord Ruler. But what do you make of it, Kite, before I give my take? Yeah, but Beyond I think, that. <laughs> well, beyond that, that, that is what I, I'm mostly like, fixated on, was that it's too much like the Lord Ruler. That's, that's really, it's like, okay, but he's the better version. And and mm -hmm. that's and Vin goes through that feeling. She's like, well, well, it's the one that they did, the Lord that, that that they deserve. So, you know, it's he's better, but she also knows that he's flawed, and as we see in this chapter as well, impulsive and ha has his own. He's not this all-knowing. You know, like one thing that can make you comfortable about having God above you, you is having him literally be better than you. But he is not. <laughs> Kelsey is not. He's a human. He he has all of the flaws of a human and has a has a, a whole ass personality. He is he's he is he's deeply flawed. So mm -hmm. you, you can't really put your trust into something like that in the same way you would into a deity who has all has perfection on their side. <laughs> you know? So this is it's a weird line to to walk yeah right and given what we got from the sazed kelsier discussion about that religion whose leaders were killed and it made them fight harder i'm still working with the theory that kelsier is intending to more or less make himself a martyr that he doesn't mm -hmm. intend to live through all of this and yes. I think he's hoping that if he can manipulate the Skaan to feeling this way about him, it will cause them to, well, rebel meaningfully. Yeah, I think that, that that's it. Um, so there is still this underlying he's good underneath it. And, and but I think what, what Vin picks up on as in like, it is kind of condescending, but we can yeah. both say like you said it's kind of, kind of condescending but it like it comes from a good place so it's difficult that's what Vin is feeling that's why she's uncomfortable she's like she can has all of these thoughts all wrapped up and doesn't really she's like I, I, there's the good things and the bad things and it's just it's uncomfortable because there's no real conclusion and I think you are I think that is what he's trying to do underneath it all yes I think he kind of enjoys a little bit he enjoys yeah. what the his ego will enjoy that kind of performance that he puts on and it makes it makes him feel yeah he i won't say it won't make it doesn't make him feel good 
he he does like it. Uh, I think that's what makes us uncomfortable. Is that like there's this that there's this enjoyment of it, which is do you, is it, do you think Kelsey is a narcissist? Mm, he's got too much empathy for a narcissist. Narcissists don't have that. Um, well, at least mm. they they use empathy as a as a tool. So I guess you could you could make a case that he he does that. He just yes, he understands people's emotions and therefore he maneuvers according to them. I think but, he. Yeah. But you think not because we know he's coming from a good place. No, it's not. Yeah, yes, we do. Also because he's coming from a good place, but he also he can admit he's wrong. Narcissists would never do that. Mm, fair, that's true. If, if, he does if, do if, that. If, yeah. Hmm. There we go. Kelsier eventually bade the group farewell, telling them he had an appointment. Vin and he left the cramped room, stepping out into blessedly fresh air. Kelsier remained quiet as they traveled toward Marsh's new soothing station, though he did walk with a bit more of a spring in his step. Finally, Vin had to say something. You visit them often? At least a couple of houses a night. It breaks up the monotony of my other work. Killing noblemen, spreading false rumors. Yes, visiting the scar would be a nice break. The meeting place was only a few streets away. Kelsier lingered in a doorway as they approached, squinting in the dark night. Finally, he pointed at a window faintly lit. Marsh said he'd leave a light burning if the other obligators were gone. Window or stairs? Stairs. The door should be unlocked and the Ministry owns the entire building. It'll be empty. Kelsier was right on both counts. The building didn't smell musty enough to be abandoned, but the bottom few floors were obviously unused. Vin and he quickly climbed up the stairwell. Marsh should be able to tell us the Ministry reaction to the house war, Kelsier said as they reached the top floor. Lantern light flickered through the door at the top and he pushed it open, still speaking. Hopefully that garrison won't get back too quickly. The damage is mostly done, but I'd like the war to go on for- He froze in the doorway, blocking Vin's view. She flared pewter and tin immediately, falling to a crouch, listening for attackers. There was nothing. Just silence. No. Then Vin saw the trickle of dark red liquid seeping around the side of Kelsier's foot. It pooled slightly and began to trip down the first step. Oh, Lord Ruler. Kelsier stumbled into the room. Vin followed, but she knew what she'd see. The corpse lay near the center of the chamber, flayed and dismembered, the head completely crushed. It was barely recognizable as a human. The walls were sprayed red. Could one body really produce this much blood? It was exactly like before in the basement of Kamen's lair, only with a single victim. Inquisitor. Kelsier, heedless of the gore, stumbled to his knees beside Marsh's corpse. He raised a hand as if to touch the skinless body, but remained frozen there, stunned. Kelsia, this was recent. The Inquisitor could still be here. He didn't move. Kelsia! Kelsia shook, looking around. His eyes met hers, and lucidity returned. He stumbled to his feet. Window. Vin said, rushing across the room. Then she paused when she saw something sitting on a small desk beside the wall. A wooden table leg, tucked half-hidden beneath a blank sheet of paper. Vin snatched it as Kelsier reached the window. He turned back, looking over the room one last time, then jumped out into the night. Farewell, Marsh. Vin thought, regretfully following. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot I wanted to say there, but I thought it was uh, respectful to just mm -hmm. read through it first, yeah? Yeah. Would you like to start or shall I? You start. I said you start. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, moment of silence as I gather where I want to start. Okay. A part of me thinks that Marsh is not really dead. But I think that's cope. Yes, there you go. Yeah, I I agree. I had the the, the, the no, it's not really him. We don't know for real. Don't the head was crushed. Face. Yeah, like we we didn't see who it really is. There's no, you know, we need to do some DNA tests here. Um, <laughs> oh god I, I, but I, also the, the cope I can't understand why why would they do that it just doesn't make sense like the, was, cope, the cope can't take me very far yeah. when, I, when I examine it I, when I first read it there was I, I the word anticlimactic came to mind it's just like oh okay but I don't think that's accurate or fair yeah, uh, especially as I read through it just now, it, it was a shock to be certain. 
I think it was just unexpected. I mean, so frequently you expect main characters to have these grand deaths, these wonderful moments, which may well have happened and we just didn't get to see it. But, you know, it occurs to me, Yedin died off camera mm-hmm. and now Marsh has died off camera. That's a very interesting choice from Brandon Sanderson. I don't dislike it. Mm, yeah, I was going to say, um, this is literally, this is how the death occurs at the moment. It's cloak and dagger, It's but it's gory. You you just discover the it's, remnants of it. You're not going to be experiencing it yet. It's very interesting that you use the phrase cloak and dagger here, mm-hmm. because that's that speaks to something else that I want to comment about this chapter. First, just to clarify, I do not think it is anticlimactic. I'm just saying mm-hmm. the first time I read it, the the thought came to mind, but that is not where I lingered or stayed mm-hmm. or anything like that. Just to clarify. But back to the but back to the cloak and dagger thing. Mm-hmm. I wrote out a bunch of notes that I'm just going to read through here. The soothing stations are supposed to be secret. Mm -hmm. But the death spectacles are supposed Mm -hmm. to be for everyone to see. Why would they leave Marsh's body there where no one would see it unless it was a message to a specific person? In which case, why didn't they stake out the area and see if anyone would find the body? I know they don't necessarily know there would be a meeting that specific night, but given that they didn't, again, why not display the body? And then there's, that was the end of my notes, but also there is a line later on in the script where they basically presume that Marsh told them everything because of torture, which again raises the question, if they know everything, how is there a base for them to go back to? Why aren't they, or more specifically, why aren't they waiting there staking the area out? That's Uh, all of the thoughts jumbled in my head. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, is do you think it's possible that they are still uh, look considering what happens with Kelsia, it does feel like they they aren't staking it out. They're not watching him. You know, they they don't try to stop him or anything like that. So, yeah, it seems like if they did really have this information, they would have acted on it immediately. That they, they it would not make sense for them to just let this play out because you know, they're so smart and and evil. It's like no, I think they would they would act on it if they mm. knew as much as they're assuming. I think it's safe to assume. I think it's a good thing to assume that everything agree. That's a pro that's protocol. That's like listen, yes. Nobody blames anybody for, for speaking. They don't like, oh, that damn snitch. They're like, listen, uh, torture, cool. It's probably gonna get everything out of the person. So just assume that and move on. I think that's a good thing for them to do. I agree 100%. Mm. Although I will say Marsh always rubbed me as uncharacteristically stoic Mm -hmm. and strong-willed. If anyone could avoid telling them things, I think it would be Marsh. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, look, obviously it's enhanced by Cope. Um, Yeah. I hope Cope, same thing. Like you got, I've got that, but I did think, you know, I, I don't know what the purpose of this, display would be if i guess they want to uh, yeah i'm I'm struggling with the purpose of this display for then they do expect somebody to find it but Mm -hmm. what would they do that for if marsh hadn't broken at all and again this is thought that far yeah this is a soothing station so it's not like ska are just randomly gonna go into the building right Mm -hmm. yeah and they own that building yeah so and yes, I, I agree that like the, if that's the whole point, why not just watch? Why not? And and the reason that I think that there is no one watching is because Kelsia is not stopped, or we don't encounter him stopping being stopped. You know, mm. we with with what he decides to do as a result of this. If they were watching the whole time, they would have tried to stop him earlier. Or why 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 would anyone let this happen? What happens next? I guess we're gonna have to get there. Um, yeah yeah let's let's get into it but also just in terms of okay actually you know what, let's go over a little bit of so we got our conspiracy theories and things but i think we're avoiding the fact that marsh is is probably dead and i think that that shows mm-hmm. how 
traumatized we are. <laughs> and and when you say like when you did go to the anticlimactic, it's not that oh, oh it's just like oh you diminishing the value of his death. It's more like we, we've lost him. Isn't there supposed to be like you said some like there's supposed to be a grand send off because this is Marsh we're talking about. This you don't just <laughs> find a pile of remains and you know that's what you feel. You just like and, and it's so disrespectful of him because you just mm -hmm. he's just slaughtered he's just yeah. oh yeah so so that's the feeling that that comes up there and i agree uh yeah the cope came quite quickly quickly i was like no no, no it can't be it just can't be it can't be <laughs> it was painful like i know that i knew that he was in danger this was he was one of the most you know he's he is the most highly endangered um in terms of his personal safety it daily mm -hmm. so i was worried about him and I, it just happened very suddenly and yeah um and I also hello what do you think of, of the one more thing one more thing before we go yeah. okay to the next then fortuitously finding the she, I, I like that she she picked up she's like wait a second there's something here we don't have time yeah. to investigate as much as possible i can't roll investigation even <laughs> so so she did just did perception and she went in and she perceived that there was a table leg and ran that was a very lucky find on her mm -hmm. part and it brought to mind again that cinematic way mm -hmm. that Brandon Sanderson has of writing. I had like a strong images of my mind of Marsh stoically working at the desk and then hearing like he's writing out the note that we're about to read. And then he hears someone enter the room and like he knows that it's not Kelsey or and Vin. So I imagine him just like shifting the pay, the items over the notes hoping yeah. that they'll be found and stoically meeting his end yeah um i heard that yeah i, I also fixated on on just what it look it would be because you you that's that's exactly what happens you with your when you told of, of somebody passing is like you think of their last moments you you kind of you try and say, what must they be, have been thinking? And something this traumatic, you you go through that imagery, I think, quite naturally. I did the same thing. And obviously, when we read the notes, you do you think about him writing it. Mm. And then, then also, just conspiracy theory-wise, I don't think th whoever did this didn't notice that leg. It's not like they didn't, they, they let that happen. Again, it's not like another thing where they let it happen. I don't feel like that's a smart decision that they, they they're like they're baiting whoever mm. is working with marsh i i, I think I that really was a genuine just lucky oversight yeah 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 let us continue indeed rest in peace marsh mm. i th hmm. i think should i do dachshund's voice for this or should i do marsh's voiceover for this mm. which is um, more respectful which is yeah, more... I don't. I don't know. I I imagined you doing it in in his accent. That's I. I but okay. but I know what you mean. Like we, we've just had this big blast it, of feelings. Let's see what it's like. If this were a a TV series or a movie, it would totally be his voiceover. But yes. it says yeah. Docs and Reddit, so I think that the Inquisitors suspect me. Docs and Red, the paper, a single sheet recovered from inside the table leg, was clean and white free from the blood that stained Kelsier's knees and the bottom of Finn's cloak. Doxon continued reading as he sat at Clubs' kitchen table. I've been asking too many questions, and I know they sent at least one message to the corrupt obligator who supposedly trained me as an acolyte. I thought to seek out the secrets that the rebellion has always needed to know. How does the ministry recruit Mistborn to be inquisitors? Why are inquisitors more powerful than normal alamancers? What, if any, are their weaknesses? Unfortunately, I've learned next to nothing about the Inquisitors, though the politicking within the regular ministry ranks continues to amaze me. It's like the ordinary obligators don't care about the world outside, except for the prestige they earn by being the most clever or successful in applying the Lord Ruler's dictates. The Inquisitors are different. 
they are far more loyal to the Lord Ruler than the other obligators, and this is perhaps part of the dissension between the two groups. Regardless, I feel that I am close. They do have a secret, Kelsier. A weakness. I'm sure of it. The other obligators whisper of it, though none of them know it. I fear that I've prodded too much. The Inquisitors tell me, watch me, ask after me. So I prepare this note. Perhaps my caution is unnecessary. Perhaps not. That's all it says. Whew. Okay. Mm-hmm. What'd you think of that? The, my my late my last note was just well stop using Kelsey's name in your secret notes, love. But you know, and I was like, I was like, okay, um, I was like that. That's a bit disrespectful, Chinsia. So just calm down there. Um, but I was like, thank goodness we found this note. Yeah, uh, I don't. I think there was Kelsey in the previous notes as well. I don't. There was, but yeah, that was my my just the recency effect occurred there because I've just been thinking that um, in terms of the information or the, I like that we, we Marsh was smart enough to know that he was being, he was, he was going to be, yeah, he was smart enough. Like he's not just going around. Um, so he knew it was coming and you would expect that of him. He's, he's that smart. And uh, again, happy that, that Vin got this notes because it helps us, I mean, we could have pieced this together anyway. Like, okay, then why would why would Marsh die? Oh, but probably because they found out about him. Duh. Hmm. Um, and what what's the best? The next thing to do is to assume that he's told them everything. And I suppose that that makes this this thing of uh, Kelsia being mentioned in the notes not really that bad because it's just like, listen, if they tortured him, there's more than just the name Kelsia that they found out. So. The other yeah. thing to keep in mind is I think that the Inquisitors who did this are specifically the ones that have been tailing after Vin. Because I remember the last message that Marsh got to them was when we had learned that Theron's crew was... Wiped out. Yes, Theron's crew was wiped out. And we know that that was a direct line from Kamen's wiping out Mm -hmm. and we know that theron's crew were the ones that organized the marsh getting into the ministry in the first place so i'm i'm tracing the lines Mm -hmm. those inquisitors are getting closer and closer and closer to vin so it kind of makes sense i i'm not counting this as a called it from when I mm-hmm. said that Marsh should be careful over this, but uh, yeah, we knew he it would make sense. To. Yeah. Also, just just one also kind of a very open question. What, oh gosh, it, if I could remember it, just hold on. Come on, come back. It was a very open question. I was too busy trying to figure out how I'm going to say it. Now I've forgotten mm. it. Uh, bu- 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 it's my life. It's like watching <laughs> my life from the outside. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. What is, look, I mean, we both, I think we both agree that there is some secret weakness for the Inquisitors. Mm-hmm. Any new theories to discuss in that regard? No, I still think it's going to be some form of an EMP bomb that'll just mm-hmm. drop all of them at once. Yeah. But well, that's what like, we turn we, we them off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Make whatever, whatever makes the, the eye spikes not deadly become deadly. And yeah, I, I, I wish I wish there was more of a clue in in Marsh's letter, but he says there's a weakness, so at least we're in agreement. It's just yeah, can't imagine. It's it's, and the reason this letter feels like there's just not much there mm-hmm. is that we already presumed there was a weakness. So yes. it's like, oh, thanks for telling us what we already presumed. But no, it is good. It is good to know that there is one. It's good to know that other people might have an idea of what it could be. Maybe. I, but everybody is speculating about it. That's the thing. The other obligators whisper of it, though none of them know it. So the other mm-hmm. obligators are also, everyone's like, they must have a weakness. Everybody is thinking that. They don't mm-hmm. know it, but so that they're just as good as we are. Yay. But that that. <laughs> That notes that notes of the other obligators whisper of it, though none of them know it. Like there's something to be found, but nobody. It makes sense that nobody is um, in the position to find out. 
actually, yeah. even in the obligators. So, yeah. Kelsier stood at the far side of the kitchen, back to the cupboard, reclining in his habitual position. But this time there was no levity in his posture. He stood with arms folded, head slightly bowed. His disbelieving grief appeared to have vanished, replaced with another emotion. One Vin had sometimes seen smoldering darkly behind his eyes, usually when he spoke of the nobility. She shivered despite herself. Standing as he was, she was suddenly aware of his clothing. Dark gray mist cloak, long-sleeved black shirt, charcoal trousers. In the night, the clothing was simply camouflage. In the lit room, however, the black colors made him look menacing. I loved that passage there. Just the fact that he is, he is, he literally, like, he's literally transformed into dark calcia, in, like, before our eyes here. Remember, mm -hmm. you, one, earlier on, very early on, you thought of, when you first brought up dark calcia, you were like, oh, docks and dies. And that's what, because we hadn't met Marsh or anything like that. You were like, docks and dies. And that makes, mm -hmm. makes him go, lose it. Here he is. He's lost male, male relative, basically, uh, his mm -hmm. brother. And. And that's just flick the switch on him. Yes. And, and it's visible. Very much so. And it's important to note, you said earlier something to the effect of, I'll rephrase, you had commented on Kelsier's impulsiveness. And mm -hmm. he must have known, it. Uh, some time has passed since the Vin Kelsier conversation on the rooftop. He has been sitting on the knowledge that Vin shared regarding the Atium for a while. He has not been impulsive, but this is what... So we don't know if this is something that he has been planning or wanting to do or biding his time on, mm. but this this certainly motivates him to do it then and there. But yeah. I, I'm I, just the word impulsive... I don't know. He, yes, I think it is impulsive. Well, the the reason I agree with you that the, this could have been the ultimate plan in any case. It's not like a changed plan. It's that he pulled the trigger on this. The, the impulsivity mm -hmm. there is he's not talking about it. He doesn't discuss the repercussions. He doesn't have any of that. And that's also where where this egotism comes in, where it's but like, it's I know best. I'll go and do it. But it could also be a really, really important thing to do because that could be so much more important. It, it, it may be unintentional because mm -hmm. he doesn't know information that we don't know that we're just theorizing on. But the act of what he does could be so important to the Inquisitors that it draws their full attention and thus gives the crew some breathing room now such that they will be allowed to continue to exist just beneath the surface, because this will be a distraction to the nobility and to the Inquisitors and the Obligators and the Lord Ruler. So it, I would say it will probably end up saving the crew. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah, saving the crew. That's a big, mm, a big prediction. I'm not saying that it won't happen. I'm just saying, like, this, this does... So you're just saying this does serve them. It kind of brings the heat off. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing. There, this, this could help the crew. But I think what, what, what's more urgent to me is our theory of we need the Atium to keep the deepness away. So I'm just more. I guess I'm, I've taken the step already over all of that and being like, oh God, this is going to really mess up. Kelsey is actually this going to this is going to have repercussions that none of yes. them would have thought of so even if Agreed. he did speak about it with people i don't think that they would have been able to talk him out of it because it sounds like a great idea get rid of the yeah. atium like yep. i think but 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 he doesn't speak about it like he doesn't consult with anyone he makes these decisions i, I criticize him for that but even so do we really think he would have come to a different conclusion um mm -hmm. they would just be like it's dangerous Kelsia. and then he could give that argument that oh no this we every we've, we've been made so let's just let's just go and and do what we can right now which is yes. the biggest thing that we can do is explode all of the attic spoiler alert. Yes. <laughs> and to be clear saving them is not entirely accurate to what i'm trying mm. to communicate it's more like it will allow them some breathing room immediately 
mm-hmm. when they need it most now that they potentially know everything. Yeah. Some time. Although, if Ellen is planning on going to Clubs' shop to investigate a little bit more personally into Vin's crew, that could potentially link him to the shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that could be very bad for Ellen. Yeah, I don't think he would personally go there, but I think his connection, having having spies around there, could be, um, like you said, be bad for him. Maybe he would also jump to a conclusion like Vin's going to basically disappear now. There's going to be no Renault. There's going to the 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 crew's going to just vamoose from the the current um, hideout. So mm-hmm. whatever happens, uh, Ellen's not going to be. Ellen's going to be in the dark about where Vin is. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. He stood up straight and the room grew tense. Tell Renault to pull out, Kelsier said softly, his voice like iron. He can use the planned exit story, that of a retreat back to his family lands because of the house war. But I want him gone by tomorrow. Send a thug and a tin eye with him as protection. Tell him to abandon his canal boats one day out of the city, then return to us. Doxon glanced at Finn and the others. Okay. So that makes me wonder a little bit about the details of the contract between Kelsier and the Chandra. Now, Mm -hmm. Renault, well, they'll know everything about Renault, possibly even that he's a Chandra, unless Marsh didn't know those details. But uh, I wonder if the contract that they made is specifically that the Chandra will pretend to be Renault or that the Chandra will help in other ways as well. Yeah, he's still part of the crew. We don't know much about him. But um, in terms of them knowing about Renault, you know, the, the, I think the reason that they would still use that cover story is because there's intelligence that the final empire has, as in like the Lord Ruler, his intelligence, mm-hmm. versus the house intelligence. So mm-hmm. they... They're not, they, they've got to work both of those angles. So if they were supposed to keep face with the house, the whole playing Renault, playing house thing, they're doing that for the nobility, not for the Lord Ruler. So I understand they, they still carry on with that charade, but it's even so, you you, you know that you, you should assume that Marsh, I, I don't know how, like, are you right? I don't know how much Marsh knew about the Renault situation. Because they mm-hmm. seem to be smart enough that they, they do think about who knows what. They have tried to mitigate that by saying, oh, like like we see the way that they have their backup layer. Only two people knew about it, Dachshund and, and Kelsia. They, they only know where that backup layer is. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Anyway, Marsh knew everything, Docs. They broke him before they killed him. That's how Inquisitors work. He let the words hang. Vin felt a chill. The layer was compromised. To the backup layer, then. Only you and I know its location. Kelsier nodded firmly. I want everyone out of this shop, apprentices included, in 15 minutes. I'll meet you at the backup lair in two days. Doxon looked up at Kelsier, frowning. Two days? Kel, what are you planning? Kelsier strode over to the door. He threw it open, letting in the mist, then glanced back at the crew with eyes as hard as any Inquisitor's spikes. They hit me where it couldn't have hurt worse. I'm going to do likewise. Woo! Yeah, and that that that's the the thing. It's just like I'm not going to tell you more about it. I'm I'm just out, okay? And you're going to have to just trust me. To be fair, I kind of think I called it though. I not mm-hmm. like in past episodes. I mean, like mm-hmm. in this moment, I was like, oh, he's totally going to Hathson. Mm. Yeah. Like I I knew it. Uh, so do you think that in in the book the characters will think of that? Possible. Mm. I don't know, but possible. And, but if um, they don't hear, if they mm. don't think of it, they'll at least be hearing about it very soon. Mm. And it's quite interesting. Um, I I would have expected Vin to follow him, so I wonder. I mean, it doesn't seem like she has. So I'm a little glad she didn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I can see her her wanting. She's just seen the way Kelsey is, and seen this not change in him, but like seeing the worst, the darkest parts of him like awaken. So it makes sense that she would be like, you know what, I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna step out of this one. Just let him be because I don't think I'll 
be able to make much of a difference or I'm, I'm actually a bit scared. So mm -hmm. yeah, makes sense. And thus we get to a new POV. Mm -hmm. Waylon pushed himself in the darkness, feeling his way through the cramped caverns, forcing his body through cracks nearly too small. He continued downward, searching with his fingers, ignoring his numerous scrapes and cuts. Must keep going. Must keep going. His remaining sanity told him that this was his last day. It had been six days since his last success. If he failed a seventh time, he would die. Must keep going. He couldn't see. He was too far beneath the surface to catch even a reflected glimpse of sunlight, but he could still find his way in the darkness. There were really only two directions, up and down. Movements to the side were unimportant, easily disregarded. He couldn't get lost as long as he kept moving down. All the while, he quested with his fingers, seeking the telltale roughness of budding crystals. He couldn't return this time. Not until he'd been successful. Not until... Must keep going. His hands brushed something soft and cold as he moved. A corpse, stuck rotting between two rocks. Waylon moved on. Bodies weren't uncommon in the tight caverns. Some of the corpses were fresh, most were simply bones. Often, Waylon wondered if the dead ones weren't really the lucky ones. Must keep going. Time had a little meaning in the caverns. Usually he returned above to sleep. Though the surface held taskmasters with whips, they also had food. It was meager, barely enough to keep him alive. But it was better than the starvation that would come from staying below too long. Must keep. He froze. Okay, that's a lot. Let's talk for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like that must keep going repetition. Yes. That this this passage, the way that he writes it, really does display the kind of mindless search that that somebody in the pits of Hudson turns into like becomes. They actually become their search. They're just always just going for the next. They must keep going. They must keep going. That's just uh, the way he illustrates it. Even later on, one of the devices, the way he uses it as well, is he repeats the thing of oh, there's only two directions up and down. Like the way that that is that comes across is as if it's a new thought, which is it's not, you know, as the reader, it's not. But you can see that this he actually he demonstrates this weird lack of consciousness. It's actually I really love the way he wrote this. Yeah. And there's very much an immediacy mm -hmm. to the prose, his remaining sanity. If he failed a seventh time, he couldn't see. He was too far beneath the surface. It's very much... This is where uh, I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And it's not like a repetitive use. It's not like middle school prose. I went mm -hmm. to the store the other day. I got some corn. I went to checkout. No, this is, I think, very purposefully done to lend it a sense of placing the reader in his body as he's mm -hmm. going through this. Yeah. It's oh god, just it's it's, it's an uncomfortable place to be. Oh, yeah. and the body, just oh, oh there's some bodies, oh, casual, whatever, yeah. super casual. I just found another body, and the amount, the smell. He doesn't even have, he doesn't even refer to what what the smell would have been, because that's just every day now. It's okay. Yeah, he lay with his torso pinched in a tight rift in the rock, and had been in the process of wiggling his way through. However, his fingers, always searching, even when he was barely conscious, had been feeling the walls, and they'd found something. His hand quivered with anticipation as he felt the crystal buds. Yes, yes, that was them. They grew in a wide circular pattern on the wall. They were small at the edges, but got gradually bigger near the center. At the direct middle of the circular pattern, the crystals curved inward, following a hollow pocket in the wall. Here the crystals grew long, each one having a jagged, sharp edge like teeth lining the maw of a stone beast. Taking a breath, praying to the Lord Ruler, Waylon rammed his hand into the fist-sized circular opening. Interesting there. Praying what? to the Lord Ruler. Uh, that that Milan just slapped me in the face. I was like, okay. Yeah, uh, praying to the Lord Ruler who put you here. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. please, Lord Ruler, pleading with them, him to, you know, to just make this happen. It's like, so he's this really... Uh, that that's one of the the main things is that that's why the scar don't challenge that why would you ever challenge god this is this is god that you're 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 dealing with so you're it makes sense that 
it makes sense that th th this, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That he he's he's praying to the person who's put him there. It's a tough one. Yeah, very, very neat line to put in there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the crystals ripped his arm, tearing long, shallow gashes in his skin. He ignored the pain, forcing his arm in farther, up to his elbow, searching with his fingers for... There! His fingers found a small rock at the center of the pocket, a rock formed by the mysterious drippings of the crystals, a Hathson geode. He grasped it eagerly, pulling it out, ripping his arm again as he withdrew it from the crystal-lined hole. He cradled the small rock sphere, breathing heavily with joy. Another seven days. He would live another seven days. Before hunger and fatigue could weaken him any further, Waylon began the laborious climb back upward. He squeezed through crevices, climbed up ledges, jutting from walls. Sometimes he had to move to the right or left until the ceiling opened up, but it always did. Only two directions, up and down, only up and down, up and down. He kept a weary... Really? Did yours... Sorry, did yours repeat that much? Yeah. Mine, mine literally says, there were really only two directions, up and down. That the way that that was discarded, like it's a, it's a sort of just throwaway line. I enjoyed that. I prefer this version because it that that's what it felt like. It's like he's had this thought before, and it's just okay. Go it, like he 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 has it again and hasn't even realized that he was thinking that earlier on. I like that the the throwaway nature of 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 that phrasing as opposed to the up and down, up and down. It kind of plays the beat over again. I prefer this more subtle one. Interesting. See, I like the monotony. I like the repetitive nature of the repetition. Oh, really? <laughs> the up and down. Yeah. I, I like the rep repetitive nature of the repetition of must keep going. That was a nice one. And then this subtle repetition, uh, mm. I enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. Either or. I like them Vo both. Voice actor likes, likes the way it, it sounds performed. That's why. <laughs> he kept a wary ear out for others. He had seen climbers killed before, slain by younger, stronger men who hoped to steal a geode. Fortunately, he met nobody. It was good. He was an older man, old enough to know that he never should have tried to steal food from his plantation lord. So the fact that there was nobody, I found to be a bit ominous. And mm -hmm. like I said, I had figured that Kelsier would be coming to Hathson, so I'm thinking... He, okay, he's going to pop out and find, like, desolation. <laughs> oh, you thought it would be after what Kelsier did? Yeah, I, like, I, I, I assumed Kelsier's actions were all done, like, while he was down there. Mm. And that's and he, why, yeah, that's a, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, which, to a point, they were, uh, mm -hmm. but not, like, the big action, not the yes. nuke yet. Yeah. yeah, the guards and stuff are dispatched. They're, they're done with. Done for. <laughs> Perhaps he had earned his punishment. Perhaps he deserved to die in the pits of Hathson. But I won't die today, he thought, finally smelling sweet, fresh air. It was night above. He didn't care. The mists didn't bother him anymore. Even beatings didn't bother him much anymore. He was just too tired to care. Waylon began to climb out of the crack, one of dozens in the small, flat valley known as the pits of Hathson. Then he froze. A man stood above him in the night. He was dressed in a large cloak that appeared to have been shredded to strips. The man looked at Waylon, quiet and powerful in his black clothing. Then he reached down. Waylon cringed. The man, however, grabbed Waylon's hand and pulled him out of the crack. Go, the man said softly in the swirling mists. Most of the guards are dead. Gather as many prisoners as you can and escape this place. You have a geode? Waylon cringed again, pulling his hand toward his chest. Okay, did you expect him to ask for the geode, or did you expect him to give it, let him keep it? I I was wondering what he needs the geode. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think back to when I first read it. I think I was just more immediately in the moment. Didn't have any expectations. So I can see that I can see someone who's more thoughtful thinking, okay, he's going to use the geode for something. What did you think? I thought he was gonna do something with it but mm. no i think it was a good choice ultimately what he says and why he says it so mm -hmm. good the stranger said break it open you'll find a nugget of metal inside it is very valuable sell it to the underground in whatever city you eventually find yourself you should earn enough to live on for years go quickly 
I don't know how long you have until an alarm is raised. Waylon stumbled back, confused. Who? Who are you? I am what you will soon be, the stranger said, stepping up to the rift. The ribbons of his enveloping black cloak billowed around him, mixing with the mists as he turned toward Waylon. I am a survivor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very functional POV. Very dramatic. I like it. Yeah, very effective, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kelsier looked down, studying the dark scar in the rock, listening as the prisoner scrambled away in the distance. And so I return, Kelsier whispered, his scars burned and memories flooded his mind. Memories of months spent squeezing through cracks of ripping his arms on crystalline knives of seeking each day to find a geode, just one, so that he could live on. Could he really go back down into those cramped quiet depths? Could he enter the darkness again? Kelsier held up his arms, looking at the scars, still white and stark on his skin. Yes, for her dreams, he could. He stepped over to the rift and forced himself to climb down inside it. Then he burned tin, which illuminated the rift beneath him. Though the crack widened, it also branched, sending out twisting rifts in all directions. Part cavern, part crack, part tunnel. He could already see his first crystalline adium hole. As he regarded the long, silvery crystals there, his scars seemed to throb in anticipation to the beat of some unknown rhythm. Pushing or pulling on the adium crystal, using allomancy would cause them to shatter. That was why the Lord Ruler had to use slaves and not allomancers to collect his adium. Now the real test, Kelsier thought, squeezing further into the crack, closer to the first crystals. He burned iron, and immediately he saw several blue lines pointing toward them as well as downward, toward other atium holes. Though the hole before him bore no atium jode, and the nearby ones surely had also been harvested, the crystals themselves gave off faint blue lines from residual traces of atium. Kelsier focused on a few of the blue lines and pulled lightly. The crystals before him fractured, fine lines lacing them, some fragments dropping away. His tin-enhanced ears heard more crystals shatter in the crack beneath him. Kelsier smiled. Would you like me to keep going, or do yeah. you have anything to say? Yeah? What I will say is that the, this was one of the most edit-heavy, or what do you even call it, different passages between my, my edition and your edition. It's not that the meaning has changed too much. It's just there's extra sentences and things in yours. It seems like they clipped it down a little bit in mine. It has the same effect, though. Um, it's just that this is this is just one of the most, like, we've just had cu a couple words difference before. This is the most stark difference that I've seen, especially with the in the other POV and now this one. Interesting. Because I recall that, like, one of the biggest edits that we had caught was something to the effect of using allomancy around the atium geodes will destroy them. And the other edition said something to the effect of some kinds of allomancy will destroy exactly. the atium geodes. Speaking yeah. of which, if anyone in the audience has anything to say about that, like what is canon versus what is not, like what is it some or is it all? Please mm. enlighten us. It seems like a big difference to me, so it feels like it might be something that is frequently discussed within the Mistborn community, but as I'm currently avoiding it so as to not mm -hmm. spoil myself, please let us know if this is a commonly discussed thing or not. I'd be interested Thanks. in hearing. Good question. Um, okay, then. Kelsier smiled. Nearly three years earlier, standing over the bloody corpses of the Taskmasters who had beaten Mare to death, he had first noticed that he could use iron to sense where crystal pockets were. He'd barely understood his allomantic powers at the time, but even then a plan had begun to form in his mind. A plan for vengeance. That plan had evolved, growing to encompass so much more than he'd originally intended. However, one of its key parts had remained sequestered away in a corner of his mind. He could find the crystal pockets. He could shatter them using allomancy. And they were the only means of producing adium in the entire final empire. You tried to destroy me, Pits of Hafson, he thought, climbing down further into the rift. It's time to return the favor. Woo, nuked. Yeah, nuked. And it's just like, it's great. But m what stuck in my mind the whole time was just, oh, God, you need that Atium. You've just, oh, damn. We need it, though. But it's not just the economy. But I understand where he's coming from. I'm not angry at him or anything like that. 
it sounds like this was going to be the plan all along anyway, regardless yeah. of venture or not. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about it in terms of venture. It's more just in terms of the, the use of the Atium mm, by yeah. the Lord Ruler in the deepness, that Un whole con consideration. Understood. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Understood. But also, regardless mm. of venture, it sounds like this was the plan all along. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and it's kind of, how can you really expect Kelsia to find out whatever there is to find out about the Lord Ruler and Atium before executing this plan? Because you kind of have to destroy him to figure out what he was using it for. So it's kind of like, I'm not sitting here blaming him. I'm not like, oh no, Kelsia. It's more like, damn, these, the, these, the situation really set itself up, itself up in quite an interesting way. And then I, hey, then again, we could be wrong about the Atium, but I don't know. There's something. Yeah. Yep. Very exciting. Very exciting as usual. Yeah. Yes. Excellent chapter. Mm -hmm. And oh man, I can't wait to see what happens next. Yes. Uh, thank you for coming along for the journey uh, on the, this journey with us. And yes. we appreciate your lack of spoilers in the comments and chat. It really, it's it's great to be able to experience this. Like I, I, I can imagine watching someone go through one of my favorite series for the first time. It would bring me a lot of joy. So I'm glad that you guys are here for this. Agreed. Statement of appreciation. Statement of appreciation seconded. And if you haven't subscribed to that Don Kitty, I highly recommend you do so. She's got incredible diagram streams on Tuesdays, but sometimes Wednesdays. Uncertain, depends on the availability. Turn on your notifications. Yeah, and also on Thursdays she does panel shows. And... Okay, thanks, bye! Okay, thanks, bye!